What to look for in a double-breasted coat? Well, it all depends on your stature. Today we're going to talk about what specific features to look out for depending on your build when buying or making a double-breasted coat. Welcome to Ask Oki. I am your host prof, also known as the King of Drape. And so without further ado, let's get started. We're going to use Jimmy here on my right as our exhibit, in a manner of speaking. This is a typical double-breasted coat. It's done in linen, tobacco linen. It's a beautiful coat. Uh, but we're not here to admire the cloth. We're here to talk about specific features. Now, let's start from the top. And I'm going to talk about this in no specific order. Again, depending on your build, we're going to look at tall men, we're going to look at short men, we look at slim men and men that are fairly bulky and what features they ought to adjust or sort of pay attention to when having a double-breasted coat made. So again, we start from the top. The shoulders, of course, universally, in my view, should be cut fairly wide because that's really where the eyes start. A double-breasted coat is an elegant garment. It's in many ways, even when soft or cut soft, it's still a structure. It's, it's, it's a garment that sort of has an imposing structure to it. So I always recommend going certainly wider than your natural shoulder, slightly so at the top. Now, here is where it gets really tricky, the gorge height. This is really critical, and you should please pay attention to this. Why is gorge height critical? The eye travels from the shoulders all the way down. If you are short, you want the gorge to be higher. And the gorge is this right here, the point where the collar meets the lapel. That is the gorge of your coat. And so for short men, you want to give the illusion of height by increasing the height of the gorge slightly. Again, you want to increase the height of the gorge slightly, above average, let, let's say. I can't say exactly how much in terms of centimeters from the shoulder seam. That all comes down to your tailor and his vision for your garment, but it should be slightly at or slightly higher than the average gorge height. Now, on the contrary, of course, if you're a tall man, you want to bring the gorge lower. So the exact opposite. If you're tall, you want a slightly lower gorge, lower than average. And so I consider myself I'm about six foot one, just a little bit shy of six foot one. And so my gorge height tends to be slightly lower than the average. You probably see on Instagram and elsewhere on social media, uh, gorges that literally sit on the shoulder with the peak of the lapel flying over the shoulder. Now that is just crass. Don't do that. However, if you're short again, you want to move the gorge slightly higher. And I'll explain why when we get to the lapel. So that's number one. Now it has very little bearing whether you're thin or fat. It really doesn't matter because this is a question of vertical height or sort of vertical view. So the gorge, the question of gorge height relates strictly to your height, whether you're tall or whether you're on the shorter side. Now, let's talk about the lapel, which is the second key thing to look out for, depending on your build or your stature. Now, if you look at this lapel the way I have it arranged, it could either be buttoned here at the natural waist button, or it could be buttoned here at the lower button, which is closer to the hip. I'll explain why this is really important. If you're short, you want to have your coat cut as a six by one. This would be a six by one configuration. What we have here is six buttons and that's one. A six by two would be buttoning here in the middle. And why would you want to have it cut as a six by one? Because it gives you a longer lapel line, which gives the illusion of height. That combined with a higher gorge. So with a higher gorge and a longer lapel line 
buttoning down here at the hip or closer to the hip, slightly below your waist, gives you a longer lapel line and it gives the illusion of height. Whereas, if you're a taller gentleman, you want to minimize or you want to essentially play down your height again by doing the exact opposite. And so what you do, obviously, as I said earlier, is you want a slightly lower gauge and you want a six by two. And so you want essentially the, the, the jacket buttoning here at your natural waist. Those are two very, very key things. Everything else can be negotiated in a double breasted coat. Those two cannot be negotiated. They have to be structured such that they flatter or they suit your particular build. Now, going a little bit further down, the third most important issue, uh, this is more arbitrary than the other two. These are pretty much carved in iron. These two rules, the gorge height and the lapel length, uh, those are sacrosanct. You have to adhere strictly to those rules. The height is a bit more arbitrary. Now, I've always been an advocate for longer jackets, particularly if you're wearing them with full cut trousers, for reasons that I've explained ad nauseum on this channel uh, over many videos we've done over, over the years and months. However, I should note that double breasted jackets typically are cut slightly shorter than their single breasted counterparts. So if you take, if you have a particular height or length in your single breasted jacket, your double breasted jacket is going to be cut slightly shorter. The reason is this, because it has squared off quarters. Remember your single breasted jacket sort of has curved quarters, so it starts to curve away at this point. It could be longer, but visually it doesn't look as long. If you were to maintain the same length in a double-breasted jacket, it would look too long just because the quarters are squared off and essentially it's a whole piece of cloth here. So that's another thing to bear in mind is that double-breasted jackets are cut slightly shorter. In my own instance, about an inch or sometimes often an inch and a half shorter than my single-breasted uh, or its single-breasted counterpart. So again, going back to the height, it's all arbitrary. I think it's a question of standing in front of your tailor and looking at how the jacket pairs with the trousers that you're going to be wearing with that jacket at least most of your time. Or if you have a signature cut for your trousers, it has to sort of, it has to present a uniform look. So again, height is somewhat arbitrary. Gorge height, carved in steel. Lapel length, carved in steel. Now, We've talked about the tall man and the short man. Now let's talk about the man with a wider girth and the thin man. So we're going to move our attention from the vertical to the horizontal. And how do we do that? By playing around with the button configuration. Now, here we have a six by, well, now it's buttoned as a six by two, six by one, but it could also be buttoned as a six by two. What you do when you're, let's say, I don't like to use the word fat because it's not politically correct. Uh, but let's say you're a very, very well-built man. Uh, you've got heft to you and you're wide. You want to diminish that wideness. In other words, you want to pull the onlooker's attention away from your girth. And you do that by moving the buttons closer in. You want to move these buttons, generally speaking, you want them a bit closer. So this Y shape you see here should be somewhat closer to minimize your girth. Whereas if you're a slim tall man, uh, you can afford to space them out a little bit. You can space them out a little bit and what that does is that it gives you a little bit of girth and minimizes sort of the, shall we say, lanky look. Again, if you're fat or if you're a man with a wide girth, you want to minimize the width of this button com configuration. You want to bring them slightly closer. Whereas if you're thin, especially if you're thin and tall, uh, you can afford to push this out a little bit 
And that gives you that illusion of width at the waist or in the body, which you may not naturally have. So those are the key things I really want to touch on. Everything else uh, is pretty uniform. We cut our, our coats with a full sleeve head. Uh, that is independent of your height, your width, your girth, uh, or the lack thereof. Uh, I typically recommend cutting full sleeves, um, and all the other features are pretty standard. But what we aim to do with some of these things we've mentioned is just it's, it's a visual illusion. Uh, you want to play tricks. You want to play a trick on the eye of the onlooker and to create a garment which shows you uh, in the best light. So again, to summarize, we've talked about three key things here to look out for when you're either buying or commissioning a coat, a double-breasted coat uh, for uh, different structured individuals or men, not just men, including women, because double-breasted coats, of course, are worn by women as well. We start at the top. The gorge height, if you're tall, you want it lower. If you're short, you want it slightly higher. Lapel length, if you're tall, you can afford to have it shorter. If you're short, you certainly want it longer to elongate your frame or your figure. The third thing we talked about was the arrangement or the configuration of the buttons. If you're thin, you can afford to have them spread out. If you're a man of, let's say, generous growth, you want to de-accentuate that by pushing these buttons a bit closer to give you more of a narrow look. So that's about it. Uh, it's a very quick, short, sweet lesson uh, or lecture uh, or tutorial here. And this is, of course, part of our uh, double breasted series. Uh, we've recorded a number of, a uh, couple of sessions before this. And this is just a continuation of that. So thank you for joining us. And uh, I will see you on the next installment of our double breasted series. Thank you and goodbye. Thank <music> you.